Let's just cover what is involved in notching joists because as I've said before, I see so many people do it, weaken the joists and there are regulations. So the first thing is that you've got a notch within the first quarter of the span, but leave 0.07 of the span before you start so that there's a good chunk of timber by the support wall or the beam. Now the maximum depth of a notch is 0.125, which equates roughly to an eighth of the depth of the joist. So in this joist, that's a one inch notch. Now all this is for solid timber. If you've got engineered timber or eco joist, different rules apply. The other way of doing it is to put a hole through the joist and you can put a hole through the joists and you have to put the hole through the center line of the joist. If you put it in the center line, the diameter of the hole can be up to a quarter of the depth of the joist. Again, the same rules apply. You mustn't put it within 0.25 of the end of the joist and you've got to get in for the middle. But if you put a hole in, bearing in mind that this joist is eight inches deep, that means we can put a hole up to two inches, which is a considerable hole really, but we must put it in the middle. And the idea then is that the timber's going around, it goes around the hole and it joins the other side and you're not weakening it. Having said that, I still don't like putting holes in joists if I can manage it, but I've got to get this waste because my whole mission here was to put this tray right down low, flat on the, on the, the floor. I've got to put the waste through the wall here. You can see it used to come through here above the floor. That's where they had the, the shower tray on legs. But I'm going through here and that hole is just on the limit of what this joist is allowed. In other words, that two inches on an eight inch joist. But you can see that I'm breaking that rule of the first quarter of the span. So I'll come out with a trap, down with a waste pipe, bring the pipe through the wall there and then we've, we've moved it down on the span. Now, interestingly, from my point of view, if you check the span of the joist, in this particular case, the support wall is just behind there. So I measured the span of this joist. Then I looked at the span tables, which you can get on the internet, and it works out that for that span, all you need is a six inch joist. So happy days. We've got a joist which is two inches oversized. It's done, oh, it's almost a nine inch joist actually. It's over eight inches. And the reason that's done is because there are longer spans elsewhere in the house. So they've made all the joists obviously the same depth. So in this case, they're oversized. In other cases, they'd be on their limits. So it's really one of those things where you check the rigs, you look at the individual situation and you work out what's permissible. I've got another little trick, which is that if I weaken the joist in any way, i.e. putting a hole through the middle, what I do is I glue and screw a piece of stout plywood on there across the hole so that it kind of reinforces the whole of the joist around that hole. So it's kind of transferring the load. Now, it's just something I do. You don't have to do it, but I always think, well, why not? You're down there, you might as well take any whip out of it. But if you jump up and down these joists, actually, there's no bounce on them, so we're pretty good. Now, I'll get on with the job. Mm -hmm. 